Hi folks, Ben Fontanellis here, on location at the Irvington Back EMS Training Center. So for this video, we're going to handle the dreaded A-frame. As you know, an A-frame splint is used to manage either fractures or dislocations to both the knee and the elbow. And tonight, we're going to cover a fracture to the elbow. Now the reason I say the dreaded A-frame is because like any skill, if you don't use it on a regular basis, when you do have to use it, it can seem quite intimidating. So I think tonight's video is going to help you out with that. Now, did you know that you can make a perfect A-frame using just one short padded board splint and five cravats? Now I know some of you are going to call bull on that one. What? I can't say bull Seriously? Man, that's some bull right there. All right. So in order to perform this skill correctly, you're going to need some equipment. So what I have with me today is one short padded board splint and five cravats. Now in addition, I have two people here that are going to help me perform this skill. I brought EMT Neil Sarandensky and I brought instructor Charlie Ortiz. Neil is going to be my victim and Charlie is going to be my assistant. As you can see, Charlie is already maintaining stabilization of what's going to be the fractured bent right elbow. I've already taken the liberty of checking that the patient has good distal perfusion and good motor and sensory response. So now it's time to immobilize the fractured elbow. All right, so I have my short padded board splint and I have two cravats. Now with the padded board splint, I have the padding side facing down and I've laid two cravats right in the center of the splint, which I'm now holding. So now I'm going to take my padded board splint and my two cravats and I'm going to move over to the patient. As you can see, I'm going to simply take my cravats, place them down the center of the elbow here, and I'm going to lay the padded board splint on the patient's arm and my partner is now going to take over stabilization, incorporating the padded board splint into it. Now it's time to secure it to the arm. So I'm going to start by working with my front cravat first. So I'm going to find my front cravat here. I'm going to cross over my cravat and bring it back up to the board. And then I'm going to secure it using a surgeon's knot technique. We use a surgeon's knot technique to keep the cravat from loosening while we're tying it. Then I'm going to finish it with an overhand knot. Now I'm going to move to my rear cravat. I'm going to do the same technique. I'm going to cross over my cravat under the patient and bring it back up to the board and then I'm going to secure it to the patient using a surgeon's knot technique. And I'm going to finish it with an overhand knot. All right, so now I'm going to take one end of each cravat. It doesn't matter which end, but one end of each cravat. And I'm going to take those ends and I'm going to tie them together. So I'm going to use a surgeon's knot technique. Now watch what happens when I do this. When I tie this down real tight, it actually pulls both the front and the back cravats in together. And it really cinches up the device. And then I'm going to finish it with an overhand knot. All right, so if this device is secured properly, as you can see, the cravats do in fact cross over one another underneath the patient's arm before they come back up to the board. And the same goes for the front cravat. So this device is secured properly to the patient's arm. So now it's time for the next step. All right, now that I've immobilized the fracture, it's time to secure the arm to the body using a sling and a swap. Now for this particular type of fracture, I like to use a wrist sling. So in order to make a wrist sling, I have one cravat, and I'm going to take the cravat and I'm going to fold it in half. 
Now, I'm gonna take the patient's wrist. I'm going to simply put it behind the patient's wrist and pull the cravat through the loop. Now, I'm gonna take the ends of my cravat and I'm gonna bring them around the patient's neck. I'm gonna tie this off behind the patient's neck. When I do this, I'm going to ensure that there's either a piece of gauze or something back here to pad the rear of the patient's neck so that it's not uncomfortable for the patient. All right, so the last step is to apply a swap. So what I typically do when I apply a swap is I like to take two cravats and I like to tie them together. I always find if I use one cravat to try to attempt a swap, it always seems to be a little bit too short. So I prepared these two cravats and I tie them together and now I'm going to go around the patient. I'm going to be very careful to go around the lower one third of the patient's humerus, around the rear of the patient. Tie this off behind the patient's back. Alright, last but not least, I'm going to make sure the patient has good distal perfusion and good motor and sensory response. Can you wiggle your fingers? Which finger am I touching? My index. Alright, and I'm going to hide my tails here to make it look a little neater. And we're all done. Alright, thanks for watching this skill. If you have any skills that you would like us to film here for you at the IVAC EMS Training Center, all you gotta do is send me an email, criticalcaring at gmail.com or go to our website, irvingtonems.com. As always, stay tuned and keep learning.